Hey, Ryan, how you doing today? Hey, Scott. Good morning. Not too bad. How you doing? Not too bad. I just thought uh, it would be fun to chat about about uh, something I saw in the uh, in the interwebs. <laughs> I guess it was on <laughs> Facebook or something. But uh, I'm going to share my screen here just so I can. Uh, awesome. Always show you a, this always thing. a good time. Yeah. So you might remember this guy <laughs> named Tim Meza. So yeah. he's a baseball player for the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, right? fantastic and, uh, relief pitcher until we let him go. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't follow him that closely, but uh, I thought that was pretty interesting that uh, we're getting AI suggestions about Tim here in this uh, posting that Facebook oh, uh, yeah. thought that I should know about, right? <laughs> and when you look at it, it's actually pretty funny, but in the bigger picture, I think it's pretty sad. So um, any any thoughts on this particular thing? I mean, first reading through it, I mean, Rogers might have a problem with this considering it's uh, AI thinks it's the TD Jays uh, team. Uh, so clearly <laughs> AI is reading. So Rogers Communication here in Canada uh, owns the Toronto Blue Jays, right? And they play yep. in the Rogers Center, I think Correct. it is, <laughs> yeah. which used and, to be the uh, Sky Dome. Yeah, uh -huh. everyone's uh, Rogers only, but, uh, you know, TD is another corporate sponsor, so they, they get the they get the badge on the jersey, so I guess that's why AI thought it, but, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's a little alarming because, again, it, it wants to build a response and a summary just based off of what it sees in a pitcher, right? So, I mean, we could, <laughs> you know, that's a whole conversation, like a pitcher's worth a thousand words, well, there's yeah, so a lot this more is weird. words so, here. I was trying to figure this out, but it's literally drafting a post for me based on something it saw and a picture that it found right and it's saying you want to actually there was i guess it was a post right that said yeah. thank you tim for everything you did and there's a picture of tim and yeah like you said it's captured the td logo which is a bank here in canada and they are suggesting that he is a player that plays or played for the TDJ's team. Yeah. It just sounds so out of touch. Like the whole, yeah. I mean, this it's a totally useless <laughs> suggestion. It's, oh, that's the problem. Opinion. It's totally yeah. useless. And the, and the biggest problem is like, this is happening in all of Meta's products. This is happening in all social media products where it's now like integrated AI. Do you need help crafting your message? Do you need a suggestion for this? Do you, you know, in, oh, in no. this case, it's everywhere. It, it's who is Tim? Freaking annoying. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, a, a, I think a, a Google search of, of who is Tim Meza would come back with a way better result of more accuracy than this yeah. AI generated, uh, blurb. So yeah. it's alarming because, but I mean, it says, who... however, with more information, it's without more information, it's difficult to say who Tim is specifically or what his role was on the team. Right? Well, that's like the I typical said, AI a, disclaimer. A Google search or a Wikipedia search would be so much more useful, right? Yeah. Um, anyway. And so I think it's just like, where are we going with this information? Because like, again, I'm a huge Blue Jays baseball fan, so I can look at that in a second and be like, that's wrong. But if you're yeah. not a, a baseball fan, if you're just a casual Canadian who just is on Facebook and all of a sudden that pops up and it's like, who is Tim? And this is Tim and he plays for the TDJs. And you're like, yeah. okay, cool. I guess that's the name of the team. Like <laughs> now all of a sudden that information, because it's presented in a real forum, you know, the brain can assume that that is real and that's alarming and that's a problem. Yeah. And this is, it's, it's interesting that this is a sports you know, environment that it's it's kind of brought this up in. But think about how this plays into the business world, like on LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. People are looking for things to post about so they can get more exposure, right? And and in not too long ago, a year or two ago, when I was getting much very much into LinkedIn, I would look for posts that I could make an insightful comment on. And now mm -hmm. LinkedIn is suggesting insightful comments or questions. And it's just so painfully transparent mm -hmm. that it is coming from AI. Now Granted, it's going to get better, you know, over time. But what we probably don't think a lot about is that the technology platforms that are using this recognize that it's going to take them some time. And the more data they have about mm -hmm. everything, the more useful it will be and the, and the better it will become. And some people are okay with that. But on the other hand, we're going to, I think, see a lot more uh, nudges and encouragement for you to share more or react mm -hmm. more or, or say things, right? And just so that it can get more uh, insights into how you react to specific kinds of things. And at some point, maybe it will react very similarly to the way you would. But before that happens, you're going to have to share a lot of data about yourself. And whether yep. it's just in likes and shares or, or reactions um, 
or your own inputs. So I think I just wanted to highlight based on this kind of fun example, where we're going with AI. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very sad because it's going to take a long time, if at all. And I think um, one thing I think it will do is I don't think that it's going to automatically evolve to the point where everybody's responses will be automatic mm -hmm. because at some point we're all going to see the flaws in this stuff and say, I don't want this to represent me. Right. And so mm -hmm. we kind of, I, I've already turned it I off. Hope I, that, I, never, I mean, I, I hope never, that's the case. I never use the suggested AI responses, mm -hmm. except maybe in a chat where the, there's a thanks or a <laughs> yeah. well said or something like that. Right? I mean, and, and I can recognize when other people have clicked that to just you know, give me a quick response to That's okay. But when you're trying to pretend like you've created something insightful, but it came from AI, it's, it's still very obvious. And I don't yes, think it, it really serves the purpose of why people really want to get on LinkedIn if they're trying to get yeah. uh, networking value out of it. Well, I mean, speaking of LinkedIn, I mean, I posted a, I posted an article about this uh, this morning too with with Meta. You know, what data is Meta collecting? And basically, here's a summary: everything you do, except for your private messages, apparently. So everything, like you, that's your status, that's your your pictures you post, comments you make. Everything is now collected and put into that model to try and understand who you are to make better responses. But the other problem I have is like that the AI response there, like, you know, if I were to just send that, then that's me, right? So now the AI model in my phone, my account, whatever, thinks that that's how I speak or yeah. that's how now I you're think about other AI models right? using stuff that came from other... Yeah, but it's a weird. but it's a miss but it's a, a complete misrepresentation, right? Absolutely, and and, yeah. and you made a you know you said something that struck a chord with me, which is I I hope people realize that this is not the way to go, and they start to turn it off and disable it. Uh, one problem is you can't disable like the the meta one. I mean, yeah. I'm a WhatsApp user because of uh, a great group chat for my family, and like that's the only reason I use WhatsApp. Yeah. And I can't turn off this AI thing that pops up every single time I open that app. You know, that mm. happens in Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else. So there's this point where like we can't escape it. So then my fear is the opposite of what you hope. My fear is because the devices are in our hands and the convenience is there and the messages are popping up that people will lean into it too much. And yeah. the next thing you know, like, uh, you know, when do we draw the line of we're actually talking to people anymore? Yeah, it's, and, it'll be hard to tell because we don't know how many people are, you know, I won't say lazy, but who would yeah. rather rely on something that's generated and get on with their, their well, life. Right? You, so, it's multitasking. Yeah. It's positive. It's, it's like all of a sudden you can have, you know, 25 conversations with your friends and family yeah. Versus just having one. So from like, uh, it, you know, it's a reward thing. It's, it's it, you know, yeah. it's, people think it's good, but it's scary. So it's yeah. a great thing. Thanks for sharing it this morning. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm so, sure we could go on about this forever. But yeah, uh, it's, I'd love to, you know, hear any comments people have on this. But yeah. um, that's all we have for this morning. It was a great uh, chance to chat about something. So uh, thank everybody for watching. And if you're not engaged to learn about cyber risks, then you are at risk. So uh, we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. See you soon.